12 days ago, I got my wisdom teeth taken out, extracted, snatched. They're no longer there. I now have four holes where my wisdom to teeth used to be. The lighting situation in this video is what it is. Uh, there's only so much you can do with natural lighting when you are sitting through a category one hurricane with 75 mile per hour winds blowing clouds through every which way. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the entire process from the first x-ray I got six months ago, uh, even before that, to the recovery process all the way up until today, including clips of me coming off of anesthesia. So for years going to the dentist, they've been telling me, you know, hey, you're probably gonna need your wisdom teeth taken out, this, that, the other thing. So I knew a long time ago I was gonna have to get it out. It wasn't until I had to get a panoramic for Invisalign to straighten my bottom teeth that I got to see a panoramic of my entire mouth. Clearly, these things needed to come out before they were gonna cause major issues. So I have the x-ray here that we can take a look at together. Oh, in the very center was a part that I had to bite down on to keep my teeth separate so they weren't completely overlapping each other. You can see in the very top right that wisdom tooth is not even fully developed and pay attention to that one because that will be relevant later on. Then you have in the bottom right that one is pushing up against my other molar. Then you can see at the bottom left that wisdom tooth is mostly out but it's right up against the side of my mouth. There's not really much room for it to properly come in. And then you can see on the top left, that tooth is coming right in at my other molar, which, you know, would be a big problem if they weren't out. So they needed to come out cut and dry. I would love to have four more teeth that came in normally, the more the better, but it, it, this needed to come out. So about six months ago, this is just like within two weeks of after getting this panoramic for Invisalign, which ended up being too expensive. I'll probably get them later down the line after I've graduated college. I make an appointment with the oral surgeon. She was super nice. Uh, they had a, a really specific questionnaire I had to fill out. You know, are you allergic to any medications? Have you had any surgeries before? Do you have diabetes? Any underlying medical conditions? And so one of them asked specifically, do you have heart palpitations? And so I checked yes, because I'll occasionally get them if I'm stressed out, too nervous or tired. So I bring the panoramic x-ray with me because, you know, the less x-rays, the better. They're, I know they're necessary, but I'm not trying to get x-rays all the time. And so I meet the doctor. He's a super cool guy, super nice. He said, I don't think there's gonna be any major issues. You're healthy, you're young, you're coming in before they're causing you pain or any major issues. Now that one tooth he said in the top right looks like the root of that tooth might go into your sinus cavity. That white solid line actually outlines the sinus cavity. He said if that does breach, he can stitch it up. It's not gonna be too much of an issue, just another two weeks to the recovery time. Right here is kind of close to a nerve, it runs along my jaw. So he said if that nerve becomes injured, you might lose a little feeling, you shouldn't lose any movement. It would be fine, no major damage. Having that said, I was going to leave within a month to go study abroad. I was thinking, you know what, let me wait until I get back. After studying abroad, that way I uh, have the surgery and plenty of recovery time if anything were to go awry. There were no issues, thankfully, studying abroad. I get back over the summer, I schedule my appointment, and that brings us to appointment day. So I had my mom drive me to the day of the appointment. I was super nervous. You know, just that off chance anything can go wrong. It was my first time having a surgery, going under anesthesia. I had previously gotten a, uh, a baby molar taken up before that had its roots around an adult tooth. So I was awake for that. I just got Novocaine injected. The tooth actually broke as that dentist was pulling it out, but nothing major. A lot of my anxiety was just based around getting knocked out. And you know, I was nervous. And I made an Instagram post like, oh, I'm super nervous. Um, and then people, some people sent some nice messages. Everything's gonna go great. So it was really nice. So words are powerful. Anyway, so I got there a bit early. I go, kind of check in, so then they take me back to the chair. The people at check-in were super nice, I was like, nothing to worry about. I go, and so I sit in the chair, and then I'm just hanging out there, so the nurse is around, being like, all right, so it's still gonna be a little while till we get started. I'll just get you hooked up with an IV now. She's getting the needles ready and stuff, and so I was like, oh, am I gonna have 
any antibiotics prescribed. She said, no, there's actually antibiotics in the IV fluids that we're going to give you during the surgery. And it was a, I think, 0.9% saline solution, which was just a cool detail that I remember. She gets the needle ready, and I've had blood drawn several times before. Twice it was with a butterfly needle, one which is one of those super thin ones that they use on babies. And then the other time I got blood drawn for some blood work with a you know, normal, bigger size needle. I'm looking at my arm and my vein as I talk about this. This was not a small needle that she was using. So I see her, she's putting it in, and then I close my eyes, I don't look. I don't have a fear of needles or blood, but I just prefer not to see. Piece of metal being stuck in my arm. So she's putting that in and I can just feel it go in. She puts it in too far, so she's pulling it out a little bit. And so I can just feel the needle in my vein as she's like pushing it in and out, you know, getting it just right. And then she says, oh, just a little bit of spillage. Uh, no worries, I'll, I'll just get that cleaned up. So she starts wiping it up. And so I look over and I can just see the <laughs> blood smeared on my arm. She's like, oh, no, no, just a little spillage, nothing to worry about. You have a nice juicy vein. <laughs> so then she looks over at me, she's like, so she looks over at me and she's just like, yep, just keep your eyes closed. Um, don't worry about it, it's fine. I'm just gonna tape the IV to your arm. So she gets a piece of, sticks it to my arm. And now I just have this IV taped to my arm. And then the nurse trips over the IV. <laughs> She was so apologetic, she was super nice. I love this nurse. Um, it was just quite the experience. At this point, I was thinking, just knock me out. Like, where's where's the anesthesiologist? Like, just get, get this in, knock me out. I'm ready to go. So she trips over the IV. She gets me hooked up with a heart monitor. So I had one uh, sticky thing here, somewhere else, and then one um, down by my belly button. That heart monitor was loud. And so I'm really nervous. So I can just hear that going off. And then my heart's palpitating, which sometimes it doesn't catch the palpitation or sometimes it'll have like an extra beep, which I thought was weird. I don't know, interesting. I'm just sitting there waiting for about 15 minutes with this IV that's uh, just taped to my arm, kind of hurting. It was just new for me. Uh, I'm waiting there, listening to my heart beat for like 15 minutes. So I'm just trying to you know, keep myself calm, waiting to be knocked out, because I'm just so, I'm ready, I'm over it. I feel like I was more nervous walking into it than I was waiting for 15 minutes for the surgeon to come in and start working. So he walks in, the nurse walks back in, and then I think it was the anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist, I don't know what the person was, but she walks in, she's like, um, she gets, she gets it ready to go. And she's like, any questions? I'm like, no. And then so she injects it right away. She's like, all right, let me know when you're starting to feel sleepy. So I'm just laying back in the chair, waiting to just be knocked out. And then I say, yup, <laughs> I guess I can feel it happening. And then the nurse that did the IV was like starting to feel sleepy. And then boom, I was just out. I did not even respond to her. Then the surgery goes, it happens. I'm laying in the chair. I don't remember initially what exactly I said, but I have these gauze packed in my mouth. They had a printout of the panoramic taped to the wall. So my mom walks in, she's like, hey, I kind of remember this. I, I had to have my mom tell me back like exactly what I said, but I point to the IV, I point to the panoramic x-ray on the wall and I was like, ask, trying to ask if they had gotten into my sinus cavity at all. And the nurse was like, what, what are you trying to say? I don't understand at all. My mom was like, oh, he's trying to ask about that tooth. And then they said, no, it was fine, nothing. That didn't happen, it was all good. So I remember getting up out of the chair. I was like holding into the nurse, holding onto my mom, getting out of the, the chair. I remember walking to the car. I a little bit, I don't remember going down the elevator. I remember opening the car door because I kind of fell into the car a bit. And so then I get into the car and then I take these, these two videos of myself. I remember taking these videos. Enjoy, here they are. I'm calm out. I look awful. <laughs> Mentally, God, mouth. Who could he? Who there? Who is Did you put it back? Did you put it back? Far oh my god. I don't know how to do this. 
Yeah, just stick it back. I can't feel my mouth. I, just stick it back. In, in your mouth And where your teeth were. I was so happy in that video. I was happy that the surgery went well. I was alive. I was pretty aware and conscious at that point. But that anesthesia, I felt good. I felt good. I was so happy my mouth wasn't that sore. Nothing really hurt too bad. Of course, the gauze were in my mouth. But that is a lie. The anesthesia lies to you. My, I had so much Novocaine injected um, as well. When I felt so good from this anesthesia, I should have kept my mouth shut. I was talking way too much, which I feel like just added to the pain that I felt later on. That nerve that runs along my jaw didn't have any damage. Later that day, I was hurting. It hurt bad. Because coming off the anesthesia and having the Novocaine or other painkillers wear off, I was like, oh, this is great. I'd read reviews about the surgeon that they were back to eating solid foods in two days. Totally me, everything went really good, but no. <laughs> Cause when that, the pain medication and anesthesia was wearing off, I could feel the stitches pull in my mouth when I swallowed. It was, it hurt, I was miserable later that day. So when I was feeling good from the anesthesia, I also took um, a bunch of these photos and posts, here they are. My cheek is was so swollen. So you can see in the video, I normally have um, this contour on my face. You could not see that at all. My cheeks were so swollen. It was just like perfectly smooth <laughs> on this side. It was painful, it hurt. I was a little nervous about taking Advil because if I did have COVID at that point, Advil supposedly doesn't help it. That's not the case. I'm fine, that was 12 days ago. I'm still doing really good. <laughs> I had prescription painkillers, so I ended up taking some of those, took some Advil, lots of ice, and then I was fine for the rest of that day. So the next day was fine, just taking anti-inflammatories, um, some more of the pain medication. Also, this pain medication, some people talk about when they get prescribed pain medication, like it makes them feel you know, euphoric or high. I did not feel that at all. It was just like some, it just felt like really good Advil. Like it helped the pain, but that was it. I didn't feel any other wooziness. It did make me a little nauseous at some point. So I just took some Emetrol. So at one point I was taking pain medication, Advil, Emetrol, and then just a whole bunch of water. I was drinking Insure, which is a nutritional shake pretty much. And then that second day I had I was drinking Insure and mashed potatoes. Um, and then so that night of the second day, I woke up at 6 a.m. super thirsty because I was really bad at drinking. That's one thing I would do differently is drink a lot of water. I pretty much those first few days just sat in bed all day, played, downloaded Angry Birds, revisited that and watched some YouTube. So on the third day, the swelling peaked. My cheeks were so big and round, I looked like a child. Here is a picture of me no filter, it makes me look really young. You know, maybe you just inject Botox in your cheeks so you just look really young. No, anyway, so after the third day, the swelling peaked. Uh, so of course it's still uncomfortable. It's, you're just, I just had four wisdom teeth extracted. You know, I thought the one that had emerged, the one that was on the bottom left of the x-ray, since that one had already partly emerged, I thought it was going to be the most painless, but since it was the biggest wisdom tooth that was extracted, that one ended up being the most painful. I had a good amount of stitches in my mouth where the wisdom teeth were taken out, but I also had stitches in my cheeks. Like he stitched my gum and my cheeks together a bit. I couldn't, I tried looking that up briefly. I couldn't really find any information about it. I know my friend Maria who got her with some teeth out and vlogged about it. I'll leave a link to that. Um, she also had uh, stitches in her cheek. I guess I guess it's a, a normal thing to happen, but all four of my cheeks had stitches in, including the side of the gum line. This tooth was had stitches going up the middle of it. These all had stitches on the side, almost like he extracted the tooth sideways. I got my teeth out on Monday. That Friday, the stitches started coming out, which is a normal time frame for that. It was that Sunday that all the stitches finished falling out. 
So now 12 days later, I do have a little bit of a dry socket, which is like when it doesn't completely close and heal over where the wisdom tooth was taken out. So there's a little bit of a hole here. The top two had the least amount of pain. I feel like it's because when you talk, it's this bottom jaw moving. This, there's not really a whole lot of movement. So there's a little bit of dry socket on this side. Uh, this side too, not so much. This side still hurts a bit. Nothing too crazy. Since it is the weekend right now, I am gonna call on Monday, see what the surgeon says. Uh, it's probably nothing to worry about. It's definitely nothing to worry about. So because of my reaction to anesthesia, I felt like I was in control of my action. You know, within a few minutes of coming off the anesthesia, I wonder if other people, you know, act a bit crazy on purpose. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, everyone reacts differently to things. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting. If you have to get your wisdom teeth out, it's not a big deal, obviously, I'm good. I'm here talking about it. Yeah, that is my entire wisdom tooth extraction. If you like this video, share it with a friend. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!